Hey everyone, Sykri Asin here, and in this lesson I wanted to talk about foreshortening. So in a previous video I talked about my lightning bolt technique, which is, you know, basically it's a fast way of doing figures. You get the head, you establish where the, um, the shoulders and the hips are, and then you build um, the arms and the leg using uh, legs using this kind of lightning bolt type picture. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail into that right now, but it's very good for getting figures down quickly and maintaining proportions. What it's not so good at though is foreshortening. So that is when you want to uh, bring something forward. So right now this guy has his arms down and let's say I wanted him to uh, have this arm facing us. So maybe he's bending at um, the elbow. Now one way I could do it is the way I just did, you know, sort of guess it out. Um, and, you know, as you get more experience, this is not that hard. It's pretty good as a, a, as a method of doing that. But when you haven't had too much practice, it can be a little more difficult to, to just do that, to kind of know what it should look like. Um, and that's where a different technique comes into play that I find is really effective. And I call that the coil technique. So when I want to do something foreshortened, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, let's say I want this arm to be coming towards us. What I'm going to do is make these kind of coiling movements, right? So let's say this was a cylinder. Notice how it uh, gets bigger towards us, right? So it looks like it's coming uh, towards us. So I'm going to do that with the arm. And I'm just going to feel it out and go around and follow the form. And maybe he's he has his hands out. So now this requires a little bit of knowledge of anatomy. Um, but with that, it's pretty effective to get down a basic shape, um, which helps to to feel out the pose. And now this is something you want to do uh, roughly. So if you're doing this traditionally with a paper and pencil, uh, you definitely want to use a pencil for this, right? You, um, I mean, you could use a pen, but uh, it's not going to look very clean. Uh, but this is something that is good to use with with a pencil, and then you would erase it, you know? Um, so it gets you the guides, and you can use this for anything in 3D. Let's say he's raising his leg. Um, let's say this leg is co going back. I can do the same thing. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm getting the coil to be about the same width as this leg if it was moved back in space. So I'm just going to draw it out first as if it was like that, right? So I'm taking this and then I'm just going in space. And for some reason, um, and I don't know if this just is for me or if this is for everyone, so uh, maybe you can let me know in the comments how this works for you. Um, but having this building block seems to make it much easier, and then of course I can erase, uh, it makes it easier to, to picture things or to draw in, in three dimensions um, when you're treating it this way, when, when you make these coiling movements. So a uh, human figure is a bit difficult anyway. You have to understand anatomy. Um, but this works for really everything. So something you could do to practice it is just make coiling shapes that go around and sort of come towards you. And as they come towards you, they get bigger, right? And viewed from a, the side, like a coil would pretty much just look like that, right? But then as it turns towards us, it's going to get bigger. And then as it goes around again. So you can make these kind of snaking shapes. Um, I was recently using it 
uh, when I was doing horns on like a demon creature. So I had, let's say I have a demon creature and I want to make those uh, spiraling ram horns. Now, if you just put them in without the guides, it's sort of difficult to to picture, you know, where, how does it turn? And okay, so it's going to turn like that. And then, I don't know, I kind of want it to coil up. And it's just, it's just difficult, right? It's not that it's impossible. Of course, you can do it. Um, you just need to think about it a lot. But it, it is kind of difficult. So with this coil technique, just get the head down. And then what I can do is start to build that. So, okay, I want the horns to come around and come towards us and then to go up and then to go around. And then once I've done that, I can sort of outline the coil. And you'll, and of course this is totally out of proportion, um, but you get the idea, right? Like you, you can feel it out much better. You can feel the roundness of that. You can feel it coming towards you. Um, and yeah, I definitely would have to correct uh, the proportions of this head to make horns like that fit. Um, but anyway, yeah, right? You can do the same thing on the other side. Uh, notice how it comes forward and then it goes down and I'm sort of scribbling it out. Uh, you could do this with like a snake or something uh, just to practice to get a, a feel of this and then once you get used to it um, you can use it for all sorts of things like arms and things uh, now something to remember when you're dealing with foreshortening is that as the name implies with foreshortening what happen what's happening is for meaning towards us right and then it's getting shorter as it goes towards us so let's say and i've seen this a lot where you have like a figure and someone's doing a foreshortened pose and let's say this figure is putting their hands towards us and you get something like this where their arms are towards us and maybe the hand looks very big in perspective right because it's closer to us and they've sort of got a sense of what they want but it looks really weird and the reason is that this arm coming towards us is actually bigger than let's say this person just had an arm and it's hanging down it's this long right from here to here well if it was to the side it would be you know from here to here this long so there's no way that coming towards us it can be as long as this can never be longer than this because if you imagine now um, I'll go with this side view right so we have this is a shoulder you know the elbows here and the hand is here now imagine this is turning in space towards us so what I like to do when I think of um, moving objects in space is to think of them as arcs. Um, so I'm putting down this guide and you, you, you of course wouldn't put it down this dark or even necessarily have to put it down. I'm just thinking this way and I'm letting you know how I think. So I'm imagining the shoulder is in the middle of this ellipse and this is turning, right? So it's coming towards us. So what'll happen is this hand as it turns yet yeah, will get bigger but notice what's happening like it's really short and then same with this elbow you could do the same thing you could put it down on that uh, like okay hold on let me try and explain this clearer okay let's say we're looking straight down this is a shoulder this is the elbow this is the hand right so that's what it looks like. And then if you turn this in perspective, so the same, same type of circle in the middle is the shoulder. And then you have the elbow and the hand, right? And of course it could be different circles, but in the middle you have the shoulder and the elbow and the hand. So that's kind of letting you know it's never going to be longer than this one because this one is the 
top-down view. So yeah, in this case, this arm is way too long. So to fix that, you just have to remember, okay, it's never going to be as long as if it was just uh, straight to the side or straight down when it's foreshortened. Same thing with legs, right? Uh, if the person's standing up and then their leg is towards us, the objects closer to us will get bigger. So the foot will get bigger, um, the knee will get bigger, but this distance from uh, the heel to uh, the hip is not going to be longer than this distance. Um, and of course, the closer you get to, uh, to a straight view, the longer it's gonna appear. So in this one, for instance, and let me just switch colors. Uh, so from here to here, this is coming towards us, right? That's the shortest. Now, from here to here, this is a bit longer. From here to here is a bit longer, and this one's the longest. So it's always going to be like that, right? It's getting these lines, these distances get shorter. So as long as you have that in mind, then it's pretty easy to to use the coil technique. Um, you know, you get your figure down. Um, I don't know, having trouble thinking, but let's just say uh, they're sitting down on the ground, okay? And their legs are coming towards us. So what I'm doing is I start always at the body. Like I don't want to start at the leg, uh, at the foot, sorry, and then coil it backwards. That's not really making sense because then I don't get a feel of how uh, big it is. But for some reason, it's almost like sculpting when I start. It's like, okay, this is how big it is where it attaches to the hips and it's coming forward. And I sort of, you know, if I want it to get thinner, I make those coils smaller. So, okay, so it's getting thinner. If I want it to get bigger, make those coils bigger, right? So, of course, that doesn't look like a leg. That's a very messed up leg. Um, oops. Ah, it's going to be too long. Let's just do this. Control D. So, let's say we have the leg, and then here's the knee, and then I'm gonna get the foot around here. So this is how I handle uh, foreshortening. And then once I have the coil down, I can sort of flesh out what I have. Like, okay. And same thing for the other uh, leg. And I'm kind of making them too fat. Let me fix that. But it does give me a sense of, of fleshing the shape out. And sometimes, notice how I'm, I'm cutting away a lot of what I've drawn. Just having this gives you that feeling of, of knowing, you know, more or less how things look. Another good way is to put down a ground plane. Um, so if I just put down basic ground plane, immediately it makes it easier. Let's say I want to take this heel and put it forward. What I can do then is again, I can use those arcs so I can plot like a circle, take this and it's going to be there. Take this, put it around that circle. So the, the center of the circle would be here, the hip or, or where it connects would be at the center of the circle. So it's going to be here. And I can do the same thing where I take the top and the bottom and I just move it on a, on a circle. Notice how I'm going around this circle. And the center of the circle is where you want it to move. So I want to get this here. So then this traveling around the circle is going to be here. And notice how naturally by following that circle, the foot's bigger, right? So if I went all the way around to here, so move this leg as if she's doing the splits, then it would be here. And then this would come around. And it would be this. And we bring that. And there we go, right? So, and same thing for the knee. It also follows that circle. And the circles are for you to create. You know, it's not going to be the same every time. Just have to understand 
how things move, how they pivot. And in this case, I could use that coil it as well. And yeah, it's messy, so you got to you got to clean it up. But after a while, you know, it gets easier. You get better at doing it. You need to rely less on on defining everything and you can sort of just build things fairly quickly. And if you just want it, you know, let's say the arm is just going straight down, well then the lightning bolt is a great method again for for handling most things. It's just not very good at foreshortening. Um, this looks really weird with the three legs. Uh, but anyway, so I hope that helped. I hope you try it out. Um, try it out on easy things. Just play around with making coils, make them come towards you and understand that when a coil comes towards you, it gets more circly. And when it, you know, as it turns, it gets more elliptical. As it's on its side, it's very flat, like straight up and down. And, you know, you can even start like that, just starting with straight and then make these wider and see like, well, what does that look like? That looks like it's turning the corner. So then outline it and you'll, you'll get a feeling like, yeah, it's sort of three dimensional, right? So yeah, hope to help and thanks for watching.